where we going tonight You know so that I In the corner of the light Playing games with my mind Well it's going down tonight It's your boy Conservance 34 and welcome to Hockey Barns. Today we're going to be looking at the Toscano family ice form on UConn's flagship campus in Stores, Connecticut. Now this venue has a capacity of 2,600 fans. It is constructed by the great architectural team at JCJ Architecture and it has a ice sheet consistent with NHL size 200 foot by 85 foot ice surfaced here for UConn men's and women's ice hockey to enjoy. Now on the tour that I'll be showing you guys through, we did not get access to the home or visitors benches, locker rooms, nor did we get access to some of the UConn men's and women's hockey's player lounges, shooting tunnel, and also their workout space to lift weights, get on the bike, stretch, and do some dry land workouts, all indoors, all heated. We Unfortunately, there just wasn't access for this tour. Hey, maybe in the future we'll get some further behind-the-scenes access um, to show you this on video. But unfortunately, for the tour that I was on and the game I went to, the first men's game here at the rink, uh, we did not get access to those awesome behind the scenes areas. All right, so I just want to walk you guys through what this rink looks like. Now, just to let you guys know, if you are uh, someone who hasn't been to this rink and are going to a later game, uh, the, where the student deck is right here over here, uh, you're going to have this side where the student deck is. That's where UConn shoots twice, okay? So if you have anything from 111, to 102 you're on the side where you'll see UConn shoot twice now uh, they've gone with the, what I think is a traditional college setup here and they put the benches on op opposing sides here so you have UConn's bench the the PA 
uh, announcers and everyone right here uh, is going to be on the east side of the rink. And then on the west side, you're going to have the visitors uh, chilling right over there. Uh, so what this does, it, it does actually help the sight lines. We'll get to that later and why that's the case uh, for people who are right on the glass. And it also gives this a feel of what most college barns have, which is the home teams on one side, the away teams on the other side. And I think that's a great step forward for UConn hockey. Now, the side where UConn only shoots once. We'll look at that also when we get on this tour. In the video I've taken, you have the ice lounge, which that'll be one of the first things we're going to look at here. Um, that ice lounge, again, has tables and, and places for people to eat. For women's hockey games, you can actually just walk in there as long as you first come, first serve. For the men's hockey games, it's going to be ticketed the club level above the visitor's side over here, which we'll get to. Um, that club level as well uh, will be, you have to have a ticket for the men's hockey game. But if women's hockey games, I believe what they were doing is this was an area for some of the parents to go and eat and, and chill and relax. So ice level lounge open for women's games to the public, but for men's hockey games, it's, you know, you got to have a ticket club level, which we'll get to later in this video. You have to have a ticket for men's hockey, for women's hockey. I believe it's only for some of the families of the players. All right, so we're going to take a look at the ice level lounge. When you walk into this barn straight ahead, you see this open area. And right here, you walk in, and this is some very cool seating. I love the Husky logo on that table. Uh, it makes this thing look legit. You look up, and you see a great view of the ice that UConn defends twice. And um, just great views all around from all the different tables that spread from uh, boards to boards here. And uh, I just love that they gave this area that premium feel. And you still have a lot of seating that is non-premium above it to the sides of it and all around this barn. And on the other side, UConn shoots twice. And that's the side where you still have fan section bleachers. And um, the band sits straight ahead across from where this photo is, is looking um, in that direct center section. And above it, you have the standing deck. We'll get to all that later. But this is something that I've seen uh, at the XL Center, the Hartford Wolfpack, their minor league hockey team, Rangers affiliate. They started doing this when they were seeing an attendance drop to just add a more premium level and, and allow for uh, premium paying customers to, to get right on the glass on the side you, that, that the Wolfpack defend twice. When UConn men's hockey moved downtown to Hartford, they adopted the same space and same area. And thus this thing has been moved from from Hartford to stores and this is something again you see at some barns in college hockey and in the minor league various minor leagues across North America just a little area for people to sit down and enjoy the game and, and, and be right on the glass but it does not compromise the rest of the seating of this lower bowl where you have the average Joe being able to sit and enjoy this so that is the ice lounge I love it it's a great area and again for women's hockey you can walk in first come first serve to enjoy the games there so check it out and support the women All right, so next we're going to look at the area above the lounge. This is going to be around sections 118 to 120. If you look at there where the red is circled, you're going to be looking straight across to that student deck. And let's take a look here. As you can see, everything is very intimate. The rows don't go up that high. You have a good view of that zone that UConn is going to defend twice. And you can still look down ice to see what's going on in that offensive zone for two out of three periods. Um, and I just love the view and look at that open glass. Let's take a look at here my reaction to sitting here um, during the tour because I, this kind of reminds me of some things at some professional NFL stadiums. So this is the, the view from 119, 118 through 120 um, are right in front of the open glass entrance. And this is kind of reminiscent to me of some of the newer NFL stadiums, U.S. Bank Stadium, Mercedes-Benz Stadium, even part of what uh, AT&T Stadium, the Cowboys Stadium does down there in Arlington. You have this open glass that shines in a little bit of light and right in front of it are these awesome seats. And I think it's a really cool concept. Uh, speaking of that, right across at the uh, family student deck or 
which had the Frank and Pat Lombardi and family student deck. I kind of think they can, in the future, maybe put some risers up like uh, the Dallas Cowboys did at AT&T Stadium for the Super Bowl for expanded capacity. It is a standing room. We'll go there next, but I think it's a great way to expand this capacity past the approximate 2,600 or so fans who can come in. And even behind here, it is a tight concourse, but perhaps maybe there's a way to add some risers of some sort to bring this uh you know, facility to get closer to 3,000 fans, which would be awesome to serve this growing fan base here in stores and across Connecticut. All right, so we're going to look at the centerized view from the west side of this barn. This is where the visitor's bench and penalty boxes are located. And college hockey barns, what makes them so great to me is that the first five rows of the bigger NHL barns, those are horrible views. I've sat there before. I regretted it instantly. But in a college hockey barn, the slope is a little steeper and it allows for all those rows one through five in this venue and even higher up. There's no more than 10 rows high at center ice at this barn. All the views are great. And I tested this out when I was on this tour. Just great views front to back. And um, see, as, um, as you walk down, even if you're at the first row behind the bench, you can still see a lot of the action because they have you propped higher up over the bench. Unlike, again, the NHL barns behind the bench, it's a horrible view. So shout out to them for getting the sight lines right. And again, this is why college hockey is great. A lot of great views, intimate, up close and personal to the ice. Stowed between sections 110 and 111 is the Zamboni opening where the Zambonis can come out onto the ice to clean the surface after practices and games. I thought this was great to put it here at the hash marks so that the entire student section can be directly behind the goal where the visiting goalie will be for two of the three periods. So as you see, there's the opening right there. You got some extra goals they can put in and out of there and put stuff on the ice. And there's the student section again, fully behind that goal. Great positioning for this Zamboni door. So my favorite seat for the west side of this barn that's on the glass is 112 row A, seat 3. What I love about college hockey barns is most of them have the benches on opposite sides of the rink, meaning that no side has two benches blocking sight lines. Right here, you can see that far side where UConn defends twice. Very good. The video doesn't even do it justice, even though I just zoomed in. You can see that goal nice and clear. And where UConn shoots twice, you're seeing all that action right there. This is the most important thing. I want to see where UConn is shooting twice. And this is a great view of the full ice at ice level right on the glass. So next we have the student section end of this barn. Now there are bleacher seats between 110 all the way across the 104. This, technically the student sections are 106 to 108, but there's all bleacher style seating for everyone to get loud and rowdy uh, in this area of the barn. So it's a great spot. It's a great spot to put these bleachers. Everyone stand up, everyone get loud and intimidate the opposing goalie for two of the three periods. Uh, I love how they did set this up and it's going to allow for more capacity with it being bleacher style versus the movie theater seat type feel. Let's take a look more at the student section. So right below the student deck, section 107, this is where the band is. Um, last night we saw them here playing. It was great to see them. Uh, this is where the UConn will shoot twice. The opposing goalie will have to face the students on each corner of the, where the band is here. And then uh, the band obviously directly behind that goalie just to give that added pressure uh, to opposing goalies. And uh, it's nice to have the students right behind this goal. It's important to have that cheering and that energy here uh, to intimidate the opposing goalies that come into this place uh, here so that UConn can, can rack up some wins with this new home advantage. Another subtle uh, thing that I noticed, maybe these are at some of the newer venues across the country, right here is a light. So the lights are actually built into the railings. Very cool feature. Um, going to UBS Arena, I don't remember. that It's out in Long Island, one of the newer venues built last year. Um, I don't know if that one had the same uh, features, but very cool to have these lights within the railings 
uh, there so lights go out you can still see right in, as you're walking down the stairs with that lighting from the railing a very cool feature behind me there of course the american flag and the state of connecticut flag there we all feast that for the national anthem last night uh, for the first men's game here all right so we're here at the student deck here right behind me is the yukon hockey logo like i said i think we have all this space behind me to this brick wall and there's definitely potential to bring in some risers of some sort to expand capacity and also if this is full of students to allow all the students to see at a, at a little bit of a slight elevation here but this would definitely be a place where you could expand uh, this venue um, to allow for more fans to enjoy this uh, intimate yet great uh, new facility. So let's take a look at the center ice side from the east side of this barn you will see here on the map where it says concourse, there's family bathrooms. There's also two men's bathroom areas on the east side and two women's bathrooms on the east side. This is where most of the bathrooms are for the, the lower bowl. And also you have the bar stools here on the east side. Uh, people were sitting here the entire game. I don't know if these are sold to people or, you know, maybe there's some somehow you get access to it but the closer you get to center ice for these bar stool seats the worse the view there's some equipment right there uh right where the section 101 sign is but the further away you get from it the better the view for uh the bar stool type seating which is just a cool little feature at the top of the barn um and again whoever has them hey people were, were sitting there the whole game here's a little bit closer again love the elevation right behind the yukon bench you can see fully over the players and the coaches for a nice way to be close but overlooking the bench without any obstructions now there was a look to a couple replays things were contested by both teams at the opening men's game and they have a special area right here for the refs to go and i've seen this at the mass mutual center when aic played uconn there last season and it's a nice little feature they don't have this little area at the xl center so this is a nice little state-of-the-art area for the refs to look at replays things being contested they can take a look right there so the best seats so far to me are right at the end of the bench is 124 row A C3 right here on the other side. I was just over there, 112 row A C3 as well. You get to see your close side right at ice level for view. And these windows right here um, allow for full view of the opposing goal and you're still right on the ice. The bench does not block anything. Um, so in the lower bowl, these are going to be the best uh, at ice seats to me. We'll take a look and see what the club looks like. All right, so this is the club level of the venue. If you look here, you're going to see on the same side as the visitors' benches, we have this club level. It doesn't go all the way end to end, but it starts at that corner and goes all the way to about the, just past the blue line. And you have a fireplace right there where you see below the TV. That, I believe, is only going to be on for like game days for ambiance. But there's a couple of TVs there, some comfortable seating, and there's dining for game days as well. Behind here on the glass, you overlook parts of the campus. It's very beautiful in this part of the barn. And I wish I could have been here for game day. This was only accessible on the tour. Uh, but I did hear that for women's games, they use this club level for the parents of the, the players. They had like a free buffet for those parents. And for the men's games, Gino Ariyama, uh, you know, Jim Calhoun were here for the opening first Northeastern. And again, just such a beautiful view of the barn. Let's take a look at some views from the club level on overlooking the ice right here. Just perfect. This is the perfect view of the rink. You can see everything here. And um, again, this is on the visitor side, so you can see the Husky players if you're at this club level. Um, and then here is me sitting in the seats here in just a moment. Let's take a look at how I felt while I was in these seats. Right, so we're here on club section. Uh, here, these seats are very comfortable. Uh, you get a cup holder right here. There's some wood. Um, no seat number right here. Maybe perhaps you can put your name on there and make a donation put it there I don't know seat numbers right here um, The club numbering goes counterclockwise. So this is C1, C2, C3 and so on. This is only on uh, one side of The venue the other side has bathrooms and some walls for UConn men's and women's hockey perhaps to put some future pictures plaques things like that 
right across from where I'm looking right now. And for this, uh, there's two rooms here in the club level. You can see everything on the ice. Obviously, that's you know one of the best things about hockey is being a little bit elevated to see the whole ice. And this is a great view of the first game we had here in this club level. Jim Calhoun and uh, former BC coach Jerry York uh, supporting his former player and assistant coach Mike Cavanaugh, who coaches UConn. Uh, so you maybe you'll see some other guests, some former players. Maybe we get a Tage Thompson appearance if he has a little bit of a, a break or. or or something like that we can get to a game maybe it comes up here in the club level and here's a cool little lighting design at the end of the club level you can see a great view of that these lights are kind of set up strategically to look at a little more artistic and when the sun goes down it looks even better and this is kind of the end of the club level there's a little bit of an overlook and I'm still in the club level as I take this video and you get to see uh, that area where people start to walk in but, and then there's the glass and there's the elevator. So they have elevator access to the club level. But overall, I love this area of the venue. So just some miscellaneous things I saw during this venue tour. Right here, when you first walk in between you and the ice lounge, you have various trophies marking tournament wins, conference achievements, and also some important first playoff win. First this, first that. Uh, very cool to see these as you walk in, and you can see through the case right to the future of UConn hockey right there uh, past the ice lounge, which is the, the actual rink. So this was a cool little place to put all these trophies right at the entrance next to the box office and right in between the stairwell and the ice lounge so as we continue through i also noticed outside there was a fire pit this is the view during the daytime when i took the tour and it's a very cool spot and both games i went to as i record this video i went to two men's hockey games and both times you had people kind of crowding around there at nighttime here is what it looked like right before the umass game very cool sight and um just a special little feature to have uh, a place to gather outside uh, before and after games. So I just wanted to give some game day observations as I'm putting this video together. I've been to two men's hockey games here and I was a season ticket holder for the majority of their stint where they were only at the XL Center in Hartford. I love how this barn and stores really is, it feels like college hockey when I've seen Yale play, when I saw uh, UConn play other teams like UMass or AIC it just feels so much more tight and everyone's all close together from the anticipation of warm-ups to the warm-ups where you literally like everyone has a great view of warm-ups either you're watching UConn if you're closer to that side or you're checking out some of the opposing players one or two players from an opposing team may potentially be at an NHL game you go to in the future so it's very cool just to watch some of this young talent warm up and show you their skills before the game even starts and when the intro video hits in when the team's getting ready to go and you have that presentation before puck drop this is a world-class facility i mean you got the darktronic high definition scoreboard there you got the banners on each side of the barn you even have a banner a ribbon board right behind the goal where uconn shoots twice and as the players are being announced you're seeing their social media uh, information flash on one of those ribbon boards or name one another and the scoreboard has another graphic. The sound is incredible here for any sort of music, warm-ups, uh, the, the in-between uh, stoppage time when the band is not playing and they're playing music. Everything is great and they have some fun games uh, during some of the TV timeouts for fans to be entertained. So this is just a great barn uh, for the presentation of college hockey and it's just it's, it's world-class this is as good as any other barn i've been to in uh, the times i've seen college hockey across connecticut massachusetts and um you know new york state as well so i just love the presentation of that you get from this barn now i was a whalers fan for one season i went to two games the last whalers game and then 97 and 96 i saw the islanders whalers and i love the whalers for that one year even though i only went to two games that's why i became a hockey player in my youth hockey days college club 
I love how they're keeping the memory of the Whalers alive by playing Brass Bonanza every time they score in stores as they did at the XL when UConn Hockey started there. Take a listen. And it's just great. It's it's great to have that. To me, this is the this is the most Connecticut hockey thing I've felt. And I go to a lot of minor league games and all that stuff too. But UConn hockey is really it, it's the closest feeling to me that first year of ever watching professional hockey in downtown Hartford. It just really feels like Connecticut team. I didn't get that feeling. Uh, with going to you know see the Islanders, Bridgeport Islanders, or when I've been to hundreds of Wolfpack games, if not close to a thousand in my childhood, it just doesn't feel like it's 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 a minor league team. But going to see them, this feels like this is Connecticut's team, and this is the play up close. When the the play is on your end, if you're at one of the ends, everything is is solid. The boards play well. There's only made one crazy bounce I've seen in the two games. I've been there. Everything plays very well. Now, what I will say is when you are at one of the ends of the barn, the, the other side of the ice, just like any barn, is going to be harder to see. And uh, that's one of the, the things that is just that's just what it is. Um, so next year, I may switch to the side UConn shoots twice. This is where UConn shoots twice from. I'm on the other side. And you can see some of the action, but you're going to miss some of that goal playing. But again, that's just that, that's what it is for any barn. Uh, this barn offers you just the best views that you could possibly get, best sight lines when the play is up close, as you see right now, the play came back here. Um, so I will say that, like, you know, it's just one of those things with hockey. It's a big, big surface, unlike basketball court. So that other side is going to be a little bit hard to, to see. And when UConn wins, they're going to play that brass bonanza. I just love how they're so open to the history of hockey in this part of Connecticut, anything north of New Haven County, Hartford County, Tallinn County, where this barn is located. This was Whalers country um, and, you know, the Whalers left. But now we have Yukon hockey. Now we have a, a team that we can all rally around in this region of Connecticut, which I love. So one of the complaints I've been hearing, and, and I understand this frustration, and this was initially me when this barn was announced. When it was announced that it was only going to be about 2,600 seats or so, I was like, you got to be kidding me. That's way too small. And with that small capacity, if you're not a season ticket holder for the 2022-23 season, for at least the men's hockey side, you don't have an ability to buy a ticket at the box office for any game. The, all the games are sold out just based on the season ticket opt-ins to get tickets at this new barn. And I understand that frustration because what made this team climb up the ladder of success is the large crowd, some of these five, six, seven, eight thousand 8,000 uh, for some of the BUBC games plus were in that barn uh, and Hartford cheering on the team. And they upset some of these great teams over the years from BU and BC. And it was because of the, the environment. So a lot of those fans can't get into this barn unless they go on StubHub. And I get that frustration. But here's the thing. Money is tight. And the cost to build a state of our facility has gone up. And this is not Notre Dame. This is not BU. This is not BC with large endowments to just build these facilities. And, and donors that a larger donor base to build these state of our facilities. I mean, even Gamble Pavilion needs to be you know, renovated or pretty much knocked down and rebuilt. And that's basketball. Basketball generates much more money than hockey, a niche sport that really doesn't maybe break even or get a little above, but that's it. But what I will say is that's the reality. But thanks to the donors, thanks to Mr. Toscano, thanks to the Longobardi family and many of the other families whose names are somewhere in the barn and many of the families that donate to this program, maybe their name isn't anywhere in the barn, Thanks to them, this was able to be built. This was what they were able to accomplish with the money from donations and money they were able to subsidize and set aside. And here we have what is most needed, a barn that's going to help recruits come to the men's and women's hockey teams. They've lost recruits because the, the, the Freedus Ice Forum was outdated. People go to the Freedus Ice Forum if they're looking to be on one of these teams, and then they go to BU and BC and they're like, well, I'm going to BU or BC. 
And that is a that's been a tough blow for some recruits that uh, Coach Cav and the assistant coaches have tried to bring over. And we've been blessed that some people did give UConn a chance from Tage Thompson to Johnny Evans to Alexander Payusov to Ishakov, all these great players who built this foundation on the older Frida's Ice form. But now we want to maintain that level of great recruiting, and this is the only way to do it. You have a state-of-the-art shooting tunnel. You have Peloton bikes. You have a weight room. You have locker rooms that I wasn't able to go into, but the videos I've seen from UConn Media that it looks like any NHL locker room. And this is going to keep recruits. And we got Matt Wood to come here. Uh, and he's the youngest player in college hockey. And he's going to be have a bright future at UConn. We got a guy like Tabor Heaslip, an Avon Old Farm skater, who's right down the road at one of the best prep schools in the country, sliding across the Connecticut River from Hartford County to Tallinn County after UHA. USHL play to come here and also he has I believe a father who played in, in hockey east uh, college hockey so we're getting those uh, hockey east legacy players this uh, momentum is going to continue to roll in and now we're going to be able to have the players and the great coach coach Cav who's believed in this program who decided not to go back to his alma mater BC when there was an opening and stick with UConn and take that risk and now the the sky is the limit for this program for the men's program, same thing with the women's program, getting big wins over tough ranked opponents, this barn is only going to help that grow. And I talked to some a parent, some parents of one of the women's uh, hockey team goalies, and they told me that the girls are there in the facility, the Toscano Family Ice Forum, more than they were in their dorms during this past winter break when the barn opened up. And they're not just playing hockey. They're not just working out. They're building chemistry and they're relaxing in their players' lounges just to, to, to really feel like they actually have a home. Before this, I was told by these parents that they had to go to a separate facility to do their weight training, to do their working out. The Frida's Ice Form, I've played there throughout youth and high school hockey. Um, it doesn't have a lot of space to work out. You could stretch and maybe pass a soccer ball around. That's it. But now they have in the same facility everything they need, uh, training tables. They have other – I think they have a hot tub hot, a hot tub and a cold tub uh, area, or more like a pool-like idea um, in there as well, according to the parents. So this is going to help build these teams, and it's also just going to give them a better uh, spot to grow and, 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 and heal and recover and build chemistry, which is important for the success of this program. I fell in love with the sport of hockey back in 1995 as I stepped on to the daycare playground and played this sport that all the other kids were playing. And it's amazing to think that back then, there wasn't even a roof over the Yukon barn. In 1998, as I started my first year of travel hockey, the Mark Edward Friedis Ice Forum was completed, and the team moved from Division Three competition to Division One. That's really incredible to think that just in 1998, they moved from Division Three to Division One, and now they have one of the best barns in college hockey with the latest and greatest amenities, not only for the players, but for the fans that are gonna walk into this beautiful barn. Yes, it is a more intimate barn, but it is going to be a place that many fans are going to be able to see the latest and greatest in college hockey. And if you can't make it out to the barn here, at least for next year, they will still have games at the XL Center. But for those fortunate enough to be able to catch a game at this barn, you're going to be treated to some of the best views in college hockey. And you're going to really enjoy stopping by this barn. It's your boy, Conserviz34. Thank you so much for watching this look at the brand new barn in Storrs, Connecticut. And stay tuned for future episodes as I continue to try to look and give you behind the scenes looks at some of the barns in college hockey and even some barns in the pros. Peace.
Fire's going up 